What is up guys? Welcome to another Living Life with Rick and Jerry video. Today I have my Ford Escape again. We're going to be replacing the rear hub bearing because this hub bearing is quite noisy. It's not really loose. It's not dangerous per se, but when you're driving down the road, annoying. You, you hear the woo -woo 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 sound. You kind of get tired of it. It's kind of like having uh, an exhaust per se. If you install an exhaust in your car and then you, you, you know, you start hearing it over and over and over and then you're just fed up with it. So that's what's going on with this. So uh, I'm going to start replacing it right now. Uh, let me show you what I've got so far. So far I got my jack, my jack stand. I already got my 19 millimeter into the actual uh, tire there so we can start removing it. And then we got my air gun, my compressor. I mean, you don't really need all that, but uh, that's what I have right now. We're going to start disassembling everything and the mosquitoes are already going to start. Here is the wheel bearing. I have my other camera too, so I can get into the deep angles. This is a Duralast DL510029. I'll put it in the link in the description in Amazon in case you want to pick one up. It's just, just a wheel bearing. Uh, it doesn't require a snap ring, I don't think, according to AutoZone. Uh, I haven't seen many videos on this, especially because this is the hybrid model. It's a 2006 Ford Escape hybrid, and this actually has rear wheel disc brakes, and it's not a four wheel drive. And I have, haven't seen any videos uh, of this truck yet. So this will be the first one, I believe. So let's get started. I'm gonna start uh, removing the tire now. And I'm using my phone to help me out here. All right, the wheel is now off the ground. There you go. I'm gonna remove the last nut. All right, all five lug nuts are off. And this one is a 19 millimeter, by the way. Let's get this tire out of the way. And here is the rear brake system on the truck. Uh, as you can see, there's no uh, there's no hole in here because it's not a four wheel drive. And also to be aware is that the bolt for the hub it's gonna be in the back and there it is right there and that's all it takes to uh, hold it in it's just that one bolt and i believe if i'm not mistaken uh it's a 32 yeah it's gonna be a it's gonna be a 32 let me let me double check i think i'm sitting on the 32 all right let's see yeah so it's a 32 uh, 32 millimeter nut that we're gonna have to remove and uh, I guess I'll get started I'll probably use my impact gun to get it out to make it easier for me since I don't have a lot of room back there all right so this is real easy to turn so I might have to lock this up so that way it doesn't move all right, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, guys, so we, before we get into all removing the nut from the back, uh, we have to remove this uh, caliper. And what I'm going to do is we start removing the bolts for the uh, caliper, which are right here. This one's actually missing a cap that's supposed to seal this bolt so it doesn't get rusted. Does it get rusted? Uh, I've already started removing it from the bottom, and then I'll start removing it from the top. Uh, it's pretty easy. This one is a quarter inch, quarter inch uh, Allen key, or if you don't have Allen key, if you have some T bolts, it's a T45. It's the same thing. Uh, I would suggest you use the Allen key so you don't strip it or accidentally strip it. But uh, so far, it's working for me. It's kind of tight at the end. So yeah, I'm gonna finish removing these and then 
we will continue on so you guys don't have to wait and see all this jumbo or i can set you guys down all right guys so as you can see i already removed the caliper i placed it on top of here because it's not going to go anywhere it's not going to fall you see how uh this these bolts go bolted up here and prevents the caliper from falling out or sliding out so now what we're going to do is we're going to remove the disc the mosquito so now what we're going to do is remove the disc from the hub here and since i don't live in a rust state or a salt state or ice or anything this thing comes off real easy so uh yeah let me set you guys down so uh we can start removing it and there we go and here is the disc brake and inside we have the uh the shoes for the emergency brake and they all seem very very clean nothing uh worrying out real weird so i'm gonna set my disc down in a soft spot so it doesn't get all messed up so now this is the culprit here <clears throat> this is the one that's making all the noise so it's not wobbly doesn't move, but it's very noisy. As I'm as I'm driving down the road, you just hear the whirring sound from the uh, from the hub or from the uh, wheel bearing. So uh, I'm gonna start removing that nut back there, and uh, yeah, just start doing it. Start taking it off. Alrighty guys, so I got the nut out the normal way and as you can see here is the actual bolt and now what I got to do now is we're going to remove the hub and to do that we need, you need a special tool, you need a slide hammer and a, uh, a hub, I guess a hub grabber, something to hold on to the hub and then we're going to yank it out. So uh, you can do that by renting it or you can purchase it on Amazon. I'll link it in the description in case you guys want to get the slide hammer. And essentially what we're going to do is just pull on this out. And this whole thing should come out right now. All right, guys. So as you can see, I already started mounting it uh, onto the truck. Essentially, I'm just going to use my own nuts that I had with the truck. Screw this in. This, they rent at O'Reilly or AutoZone. So you can rent the whole kit. So this just holds on to the hub. And then you got your hammer, which is this right here. And this part just goes screwed in to that part right there. And essentially you're going to screw it in as much as you can. You want to get as much thread as possible. And slide the hammer a little bit closer so you have more leverage to screw it in. And that should be good enough there. So essentially now what we're gonna do is with the hammer itself, we're gonna slam it out. So it's gonna go. Alrighty guys, so I just got out the hub. The hub is right here. It was a pain in my rear to take this off. It's not because it's, you know, it was that difficult but because i beat the crap out of my hands uh my hands are all messed up as you can see my towel that i was holding the the hammer with uh, i ended up ripping it into little pieces because uh the slide hammer was pretty hard to get out so i got it out uh, right now i'm gonna be working on the snap ring i got these pliers i hope it works these are the only ones i have that can probably do the snap ring since uh my actual snap ring pliers are too small to go in there. These are from the Pittsburgh, uh, the, uh, what do you call it? From Harbor Freight, so they suck. So I'm gonna be trying to use this tool to take it out. So, yep, let's get started. Alrighty guys, so uh, we're ready to pull out the bearing. I did take off the snap ring, it's right there. This is a pain in the ass. Uh, it took me and my nephew, which is behind me. Say hi, you So, uh, yeah, it took me and him to take it out. I had to get a screwdriver and his help so we can pry it out. 
And now we have the bearing removal tool that I am gonna link in the description. It's basically this whole kit right here. And it's only 40 bucks on eBay or you can get it on Amazon for 50 something. And so yeah, we already tight, we already put the cap on here. There's a big bolt that runs through the middle that goes all the way to the back. As you can see, there is my 32 on that big giant bolt back there with the actual presser. And we're gonna tighten it up and we're gonna get this bearing out. So let's do that. <clears throat> Alrighty guys, so here is the old bearing. It's inside this little contraption. Dude, this thing's pretty cool. I like this tool. You can get it for 42. I got it for 42 on eBay. And there we go. And there it is. Old bearing is out. It's all jacked up now since we had a uh, sledgehammer that shit out uh, so now we're gonna get our new bearing after I clean this up a little bit and we're gonna put it in all right guys so I already got the tool back in I'm going to uh, tighten this baby up getting the new bearing pressed in I'm doing it right because if not I'm screwed by my bearing All right, guys, so we just pressed in the bearing. It's nice and snug. It's time to get, to get the tool out. This is probably the easiest job, easiest part of the job, is getting the bearing in. guys so we got the bearing pressed in i already got the groove for my snap ring at first i was kind of scared i was like wait it's not going in but it was just me i didn't press it in all the way and now uh, here comes the more difficult part of trying to put this thing back on uh, it took me and my nephew uh, quite a while to uh, put it to take it off and now it's gonna take us a long time to put it back in let's hope it goes in easier than it came out all right guys so i got the snap ring in uh it's actually easier to put in than to take out so that was pretty smooth and we got the new bearing in there nice and new now it's time to put our hub back on which i still have attached to my my sledgehammer on my slide slide hammer. I hope I don't have to buy new lugs. You think? Oh my god! I think I messed up my lugs. But uh, it is what it is. We gotta, gotta do what we gotta do. Alrighty, guys. So I am done. 
So what I had to do is uh, once I put the hub back onto the new bearing, um, I kept on tapping it in slightly. I didn't hit it hard, just tapping it in so I can get the uh, nut, or not the nut, but the actual um, screw part of the nut pass a little bit so I can get that uh, the nut in there. So as soon as I did that, uh, uh, once I got a little bit in there, I screwed in the nut and then I screwed it in, holding, oh, holding, holding the new hub in, or not the new hub, but the, the hub. And I was, I was holding the hub, I kept on turning it from the back and uh, slowly but surely the, uh, the hub went back in, uh, put the brakes back on, or put the brake disc back on. And then uh, just be careful when you're yanking it out that you might shift your shoes. So just make sure that your shoes are seated properly. And then put your brakes back on. Finally, I put the wheel back on, but uh, I went back there again to make sure this was nice and tight. And this is nice and tight now. So now, uh, now I gotta tighten my screws in the front for the wheel. Woo, hands are filthy. Woo! Almost ran over my camera. Alrighty, here I am with my messed up hair, dirty hands. And we're gonna take a quick test drive to make sure that our bearing doesn't sound like crap. Because if it does, we gotta take it out again and return it. Oh man, immediately, I can already tell. A difference what a difference this thing feels like a brand new truck now oh man and then with the EV kicking in whoo this thing is quiet I've never noticed how quiet this truck is this is amazing that bearing was a piece of crap Wow, see how quiet that is? Dang, you can hear me clearly. No more, uh, see when I was driving, before I fixed this bearing, uh, I was driving and all I would hear is and then as I was coming to a stop, it would be like and then you would take off again and it would be like and then as fast, the faster you go, the more <laughs> that was horrible. And now this thing is so quiet. Oh my God, I've never, if I would have known, I would have fixed this a year ago. Uh, this, this noise, since we got the truck, I noticed the noise, but it wasn't that bad. And uh, you know, I thought it maybe it would be the bearing and stuff like that. So, you know, I check all the, you know, wheel movement and making sure that the bearings are not loose and stuff like that. And I didn't notice any play coming out of any of them. So then, um, you know, I kept on driving and then I started pinpointing where the actual noise was coming from. And I noticed that it was coming from the back on the right side. <clears throat> and then that's when, you know, I started figuring out, okay, well then it's the bearings, the bearings going out. Wow, what a difference. This truck or this mini little SUV sounds a thousand times better. You can actually hear me going down, like talking to you. Before, before this bearing, you couldn't hear anything inside. All, all you would hear was the shuddering noise from the bearing. Just well, anyways, if you do have a Ford Escape Hybrid and you're wanting to replace your bearing, hopefully you find my uh, my little uh, follow through easy. Again, do this at your own peril. I can attest to you, removing the hub and removing the snap ring was two of the hardest things to do in this project. The hub itself, I had to use the uh, the hammer as you saw. It took me and my nephew 45 
minutes, and even then, 45 minutes, we destroyed the old bearing. I mean, it doesn't matter, it's gonna get replaced anyway, but still, we destroyed the bearing with so much force. My hands are so bruised. I mean, you can't see the bruising, because obviously they're freaking blacker than, blacker than, uh, what do you call this, charcoal? Like if I was in a charcoal mine. But yeah, that hammering took the longest. It, it was the worst thing that we, we did with this project. This my, my hands are beat up underneath. But once you remove the snap ring, you have the tool to remove the old bushing or the old bearing. That was the simplest part. Just make sure after you install the bearing and the new snap, the snap, putting in the snap ring was easy because you already have it out. You're clamping it down and you're just shoving it in there and that's it. And it just seats in there. Putting the new bearing in or the hub back in was real easy. Just put it in there, tap it in just a little bit just to get the spanner or the nut, be able to spin the nut on the, on the other side. And once I got the nut in there, I tightened the nut by holding the hub. And I was, I was holding the hub, the hub was going in slowly and slowly and slowly. It started getting tighter. So what I was doing is uh, I was holding it with my, with my actual uh, extension. So I was holding it and when I was cranking it on the other side, so it's <laughs> and surely enough, I got it in there. I didn't know if I got it in there all the way, but I was able to put the brakes back on so that assured me that it was in there. And once I put the tire back in there, I actually went back there and cranked it some more until I couldn't anymore. And that's how tight I put it in there. I just, it was hard, hard, okay? It was, it was in there hard. After that, Tighten the nuts for the tire, and we're all done. Don't forget to put the uh, ABS ring back on, or else you're gonna get ABS codes. And that's it, that was it, the end of the project. So anyways, I hope you guys liked this video. If you guys did, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to Living Life with Rick and Jerry for more videos like this. We do air all kinds of videos, not just repairs, but in you know reviews, podcasts. Uh, Jerry has her own makeup stuff. Uh, Re, you know just in general we have a lot of stuff on this channel and even you know cooking recipe videos so stick around guys subscribe we'll catch you guys in the next video